Hey, and welcome to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're going to look at creating rendered plans. Like, ooh, rendered plans, not only like overall plans and site plans, but also like actually cut floor plans, which is kind of interesting. And this has kind of been something that we could have done in the past, but as of right now, with new features in 2022, we have lots more options. So before we get into that, if you would please demolish that like button, it really helps me a lot and also tells me that you might have learned something. Okay, getting into it now. We're talking about rendered floor plans and all this, which can be useful if you're trying to make some sort of a presentation that's not just a basic floor plan for documentation purposes. And so what was it that allowed us to now do this? Because before, if you're familiar, uh, we can always come here and do this. We can get this come to our custom views here and we can go to a top view really easy you know look at this now uh, what I want to point out here and it's very obvious I don't have to point much out is if I zoom in here like just the quality is significantly different and not only is it different but it's significantly reduced and I can't tell you exactly why this is or what's happening or anything like that but what I can tell you is that we don't have to deal with this anymore because we have the magical path tracer so basically we can get our image that we want from here rendered knowing that we have this perfect site plan so i want i do want this you know more or less full site plan and you know okay that's probably good enough here and with that said i want to come over here and actually add this to my images and so that's it great i want to zoom in a bit more because for some reason i didn't frame it right i'll update that and so with that we can come into our image go to render and simply turn it on like Obviously, this is very simple, and I have a completely separate video on path tracing itself, but I do want to point out that yeah, I want to make this known to you that you have the option of using the path tracer in many different ways because it actually allows you to use this perfect site plan view. You can't achieve this kind of view in perspective because you just can't. Like it, it's the, the next closest thing we get is something like this, and let me show you. Coming to this other image that I have here, I've got something close to that. And it just so happens that this isn't quite straight up and down. And obviously you can see like I'm pretty close, but I'm still in perspective I, I, because I can see some of these vertical faces. And so you might say, well, oh, yeah, this is close enough. Well, maybe it's close enough for you. But if you want a true, more or less orthographic site plan, you're going to have to do it with this, do it like this. And this is great because it's path traced. This is really great. Obviously, I need to work on some of the quality here, things like that. Uh, but nonetheless, this is really nice that we actually have this ability. Um, you can see the, the giant difference. It, I actually get a, a somewhat rendered plan in that sense. So let's take this to the next level uh, because, of course, it's nice that we can go ahead and just click two buttons, get a perfect site plan view, and then render that out. That's that's more or less the easy part. And I won't, I'm saying that the site plan is easy, yes, but the floor plan, it's not that it's hard, but its it takes more steps, which is perfectly fine. So let's come back here uh, to my perspective view, which is gonna just be that centered. And then that's great, okay. There are a couple ways we can introduce a true floor plan in here. Well, one being, and depending on how you like to work, this could be easier or not. The first one is you could end up exporting your model as a, you know, actually in 3D, with it cut like as if you have a section box out of revit or any program and it's literally cut making that floor plan for you and that if that's the case then the model is basically the way you want it to be already and you can just simply go back to this regular top view get that orthographic top view and you're good to go because you have that actual cut in your model but if you want to do everything in twin motion which i prefer because I'm in 3D. I don't want to end up chopping my building and re-importing everything like that. I just want to work in this view. Well, how would we do that? Well, we can go use the section tool. So coming down here, tools, sections, and then my section cube. This is very powerful and I have a separate video on this. So I'd highly recommend you check that out because this that will tell you everything. Um, so what we're going to do is just, we're going to place this here on a flat face. So I know it's flat right there. Perfect. Okay, cool. And so you'll obviously see here, as I get rid of this, we can expand this down, move, or move it down, and we can see what happens. Well, clearly, I am cutting into my model, which that's what I want. Okay, so obviously I want to do that, but I want to do that in ways that uh, expand my entire site. So how can we do this 
easily. Well, I can come over here and press tab to get ultimately to my scale. And you can see that I have different options as far as getting the scale of this box where I want it to be. And so you know, maybe this is 100. I don't know. Obviously, putting that at 100, it, it flies a little bit too far. So that might be a bit much. And you can see that this is working in the X, Y direction or you know the single direction. And then I can do the same thing here, maybe 20. So now we have this entire box. And if I press F, I can zoom in. I can see the whole box. This seems to be enough. Now I'm going to tab again until I get to this view, which is great. So I'm going to tab again until I get to uh, where I can actually use this and just move it around. Like, okay, great. So I'm moving this around here, and you can see I might need to expand this just a bit more. So the scale uh, probably up these by 5. Not even 5. 1.5 <laughs> considering the size. Things to be aware of, things to learn from. This is based on the current scale. Okay, great. So let's go back to and pan this over. So we're pretty good. Now, the only thing left is to really go up and down, basically actually cut this and so the you might say the disadvantage here is that it's all cut at a single elevation but most floor plans will be now if you're trying to export and see different things you know you you would might be better off doing that in your model and then at re-exporting so you can see that so let's push this down and we can see immediately the impact it's having obviously i need to adjust this a bit for the site but if we're just talking about the, about the building which is primarily what i care about um that's probably good. Let's go down a bit more. Cool. And now you can see I need to increase the size of this vertically because I'm my box is literally in the middle of my building. Um, so I can move this up just like this, and we can see that that's great. So I'm cutting everything, and it might be that it is too much, but you know, regardless, uh, we're going to get this type of effect. Now we that was kind of the extra step that I was talking about earlier, because really at this point. There's not much more to do than to simply go back into our other view and work on getting the rendering looking good. And by other view, we can just come over here again to the same top view and we can see, look at that. Everything is nicely cut and nicely. I, I don't mean actually nicely looking, uh, but we actually see our floor plan like in full. We can see everything we want to see in our floor plan. We can see our cutting through all these structural elements here. Uh, that's exactly what I want. Now, this is not going to be perfect. Clearly, the site is you know, not flat. And so I'd recommend that you make this look more presentable. Um, but again, let's go ahead and frame this as if we were going to work with this on an image. So here we go. I mean, in this case, I'm probably most worried about the building because that's what this is. Uh, it's a floor plan through the building, so I can fix the site and things like that. But I'll update this location. Let's go to more render and then path trace, turn this on and we can see, obviously I don't have the best quality, like hundred percent, but immediately it's rendered. I can see shadows. I can see the light that I need to, and everything is rendered. It's really nice. Um, I imagine this would look better and be more presentable or easier to read. If I had a smaller plan with more details in all of the you know, features and furniture and everything that might be there. But for this, this is doing the job. Like I can clearly see that these are nicely rendered, and even with the low quality that I have here uh, from this path tracing, it's just it's really nice to look at. And the fact that we have this ability is great. So ultimately, the screenshot that I, I include for this video, this thumbnail, will be a, a really nice rendered image because I'm going to work through this just enough. But as far as the video and how everything works, th that's kind of it. Uh, it shows you everything that you can do. So obviously you can go into the settings for uh, the section cube, change the cut, the poche, anything like that, the colors, whatever it might be. Um, get that to where you want. And then obviously all the different path racing settings, you can check both of those videos out because they're both separate videos. They both tell you exactly what to do and they both would highlight everything that you might need to know to get this kind of a thing, this rendered plan or rendered site plan working beautifully for you. And I'm so pleased that the path racer is within twin motion it allows us to do this so easily and it's in most cases just another button it's a different type of rendering and allows us to take something that looks really kind of gross in this kind of a view i don't know why this view exists um, it's probably just for processing purposes but regardless this view is only useful in this kind of an application literally seeing it on screen and that's it not exporting so with 
all of this in the path tracer, we can export this beautifully, doing everything that we want, get a nice rendered image, not only image, but just rendered floor plan and site plan. But uh, one other thing I will point out is because we're using the same same sort of tactics is I can do the exact same thing, but for elevations. And obviously I may not need to do this, uh, but this is really great that I have this option. So in this view, I'll, I'll go ahead and hide this section cube because it's doing nothing for me. Maybe I want to rotate around, but you get the idea. This is doing the exact same thing, whether it's a rendered section, rendered elevation, rendered plan. I love this because it is going to allow me to do just about anything I want and get any sort of image, whether it is a uh, of just the site here. It's just terrible or cut through my building. So obviously I would change the location of this and I would hopefully, uh, these elevation shots would appear better. Um, like this is a much better one. Obviously I'm cutting through my side, so I might look to that, look to hide some of that, but we can take this kind of an image, which is pretty cool, you know, depending on the elevation you're looking at. But if we go ahead and make this an image, we can do the exact same thing. Zoom in here cool update this go to more and then let's turn that path tracer on and look at that i mean i suddenly have a fully rendered elevation like what if you told me that we <laughs> could do this i i would you know a year ago we couldn't have done this is the point uh, because path tracer didn't exist and the fact that we have it now means look at that i it, it's really great obviously i have i need to deal with the site but this is everything that we would want to see out of twin motion and the path tracer is working wonders for us in this regard because it allows us to do this because this view looks, looks terrible i would never want to render out of here and, and we we've talked about this before uh, i wish we didn't have to deal with this kind of a view but now we actually don't and that's the great part look at this so this is the type of view that i would expect to see obviously you can turn you can uh, further adjust this with section boxes if you want to look at this a different way uh, but it is really exciting to see something like this rendered, fully rendered out. Nice. Really good looking. It, it might be kind of hard to deal with some of the lighting and get that working how you might want it to. Um, but nonetheless, this is great. So that will do it for this video. Uh, we looked at all the rendered plans, sections, elevations, things like that, site plan. Um, using the these different options as far as actually forcing these views and using these different views within Twinmotion. But on top of the fact that we have the ability to use the pass tracer to fully render those views now. So that will do it. I hope you ended up learning something. If you uh, did, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. Like I said, go check out the path tracing video and the section box that will help you everything and do understand this video more. Um, but that will be all the tools that you need for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.